should probably have some perspective no, on that. Go ahead. On this question. Get the mic down. That's all right. Uh, the, the number one cause of death in the country is cardiovascular disease. Right. right. And so I think the assumption is that if you do cardio, you're going to you're going to treat, you're going to do because, something to help. Because that you. word is in both words. Yeah. Yeah. Is right. there cardio right. is in cardiovascular is there disease? You're establishing that only a, a strength training program only will prevent the cardiovascular disease. <laughs> That's why I think you need to get the literature with the critical studies to establish that fact because it's, because it seems so. Well, That's yeah. what you're going to need to have, right? Well, I don't think that'll do it. I mean, you've got several uh, pretty damn good studies on great big giant ass populations that have conclusively demonstrated that there's no correlation between the consumption of saturated fat and heart disease. And what is the continued stated position of the American Dietetics Association? Reduce your consumption of saturated fat. You're pissing up a rope is what you're doing. You're pissing up a rope here. People are going to believe what they want to believe. Whether it makes any sense to believe that or not, people are going to believe what they want to believe. Uh, uh, cardiovascular benefits are obviously there. I'm running a... It doesn't matter, Bucky. It doesn't matter that they're there. It doesn't matter that it's obvious that they're there. People are going to continue to do cardio because cardio makes you skinny and cardio prevents heart disease. It just does. Okay. Um, <coughs> I was coaching a friend of mine and he told me that he was um, masturbating three times a day. I love that You're coaching a 13 year old boy? I think he's got issues. You know, he's got some He apparently does. He's got some issues. How, how old is this guy? He's like uh, 33. Oh, yeah. That's impressive. <laughs> uh, and also, I, um, I trained a style of martial arts, and in China, they believe that you have to restrict the amount of times you ejaculate. They, ch the Chinese people believe lots of weird things. Isn't that right, Will? Where are you? You heard the icing of the testicles thing? No. You have it? Well, I'll tell you real quick, a little anecdote. <laughs> I was at a presentation in, in 2000 at the Olympic Training Center, and Mark, what's the guy's name that later became the goddamn Olympic Training he ran the program at, uh, on the UP at Upper Michigan State, Northern Michigan State. And your, your, it, note, your notes on this are like the funniest thing I've ever read. Well, we could go get those and read them aloud if you want. So I'm taking notes on this lecture that he's, that he's talking about. And apparently it was the position of the coaching staff at the Chinese national weightlifting team that everybody, all the males on the team should ice their testicles at night before they go to bed to increase, the <laughs> <laughs> increase the production of testosterone. I, look, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. How does the reduction in dietary saturated fat prevent heart disease? I don't know. But I'm just telling you that the Chinese, at least the Chinese national weight ducting team, had some interesting assumptions. Were they better than the U.S. team at that time? Yeah. So <laughs> that's why everybody's writing this down, see? Because, oh, hold it, wait. Cause, effect, or correlation? I know, I know if I was the Chinese weightlifting team, I'd come to the United States and tell everybody to ice their balls. <laughs> if, I was, if I was the head of the Chinese, if I was the coach of the men's team, I probably would do the same damn thing. Oh, and while you're at it, run every Saturday, five, five six hours. What was the actual question? So anyway, the actual question. 
Uh, so what, 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 do you think there's any evidence to suggest that ejaculation <laughs> hinders recovery, like uh, impedes recovery? Manchester? And with strength training? What is your personal no. experience? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I assure you that there is no evidence that <laughs> that, that is the case. No. I assure you that there, there is no evidence. At least my own personal ex research is not extensive personal research. As extensive personal has shown absolutely no relationship. T tell him to carry on. <laughs> PR, man. <laughs> let's let's get four. <laughs> five. <Yeah. laughs> Do your fives. <laughs> yeah. Yes, indeed. In fact, all right. I have that, may, that may be the best question we have had in a while. In a while. <laughs> uh, I, have, I have a question about if there's any uh, evidence, not like that, but uh, any evidence or have you guys had any experience in strength training people with fibromyalgia that it, the, um, in helping uh, with with pain or is there just well I had a mention of this in my article last week on PJ media about back pain and and uh, and training at Austin's touched on this briefly in an article he had uh, he's written about this very topic and uh, I Fibroalgia is not a diagnosis, it is a description of some symptoms. I think it's poorly understood, but I think when it's finally 50 years from now, it's going to be understood as a psychological phenomenon. I'd say it, there's a lot of evidence that fibromyalgia is just a hyper awareness of sensations that that particular individual is interpreting as pain and that you and I don't interpret as pain. Is that Reasonable. I think it's reasonable for what we know right now. I think if you're going to train these people, there's having the diagnosis. Uh, it's kind of a heterogeneous population in terms of severity and things like that. And there's oftentimes a lot of comorbid psychiatric issues. They have kind of severe anxiety, depression issues like that. And their sensitivity to pain is, I mean, it's pathologic sensitivity to pain, like you, like you were saying. And so. Um, the worst thing that so exercise has been. In other, in other words, the sensitivity to pain is the pathology, not the thing that's causing the pain itself. Because yeah, there's no objective right. tissue pathology, like under a microscope or mm -hmm. MRI or something. Like. So the thing is that uh, exercise. There's been plenty of data showing exercise to benefit patients with fibromyalgia. Mm -hmm. The specific styles of exercise, usually not barbell training. Um, I would suspect but that it would be beneficial. However, I think the, the caution is that they need to do things very carefully to avoid things that are actually uncomfortable or things that they could interpret as pain from discomfort. You know what I mean? Because they're so hypersensitive that they can, the smallest thing can end up, you know, uh, with their hypersensitivity, they can end up feeling a whole lot more pain right. as a result. So exercise, completely recommended, go for it. But caution. Right. Careful. Don't, don't, don't run them off. Don't, right. don't, don't load them super aggressively off the bat, you know, stuff like that. Okay. Uh, another like sexual abuse histories, things yeah. like that. It's other it's things are wrong. Yeah, other things are wrong. Uh, and no. if it's a male, I'd be interested in their testosterone level mm -hmm. to revisit a previously mentioned topic. Mm -hmm. What is the incidence of. Uh, fibromyalgia symptoms in male populations versus female populations. Massively female dominated. That's what I've I would never seen the That's what I would have heard. That's what I would interpret. Is, is the person you're yeah. talking about female? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It may be that she needs testosterone too. Hey. I think what you do is you put a hundred cc's about a hundred about a hundred milligram hundred shut up a hundred mil a hundred milligram put in a hundred milligram and see what happens what what bad thing could happen 
there's not any bad things. There are things that could happen, but none of them are bad. Right. So that's what I would do. Yep. Uh, uh, another uh, book question. I, uh, I bet you've probably read this book, and I think everybody should read it because it kind of – the condition, especially the United States today, uh, 1984. Have you read that book? Well, it's been a long time. Well, right. And but it, you know, I, it, I'm probably not going to read it again because socialism is just not entertaining to me. So, right. I don't want to read it again either. I don't want to read it again. Uh, I have read it, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. obviously. Okay. Will? What is uh, a typical pull-up progression that you take someone through? If they come into the gym and they can't do a pull-up, I want to I want to see if there was a difference. And I'm guessing there is obviously with a, a regular person or like a general population person, as opposed to an obese person. I'm guessing. Well, that an obese person can't do pull-ups, right. and it's ridiculous to think that an obese person can do pull-ups. So I wouldn't even try to have them do pull-ups. I'd have them do lat pull-downs because until they get down to normal body composition, it's pointless to even try. Right. But I would think that. Uh, Oh, I don't know. There's probably other guys in here that can address that better than me. What do you? I had someone ask me during the break how I program to help someone get their foot to pull up. And I, the approach I've used with some people, particularly older folks, some frail females, um, two day a week training the pull up. One day I have them do some sort of like a band assisted pull up where they can do it for <coughs> a few more reps, obviously, than they, if they can't do any with their own body weight. So they do three sets of what kind of many reps as they can get. Stopping just shy of failure. The other day they do eccentric negatives for singles, get up to four, five, six singles, maybe do doubles after that, uh, and just progress that volume up until they can do a chin. So you mean that you do a single for that set, and would you raise the. A set of one. A set of the, one. For the negatives. Yeah. Right. Because you have to get back up over the bar. Right. And you would raise the time that you would lower? No, I would add reps. I wouldn't make them do it perfectly okay. slower. I would say, oh, today you can only do one, and then you're real tired and sore afterwards. Tomorrow we'll do it. Next time we'll do two. Okay. Yep. Uh, so, yeah. something. If you have somebody that is otherwise healthy and is enormous, but they're just not that strong, mm -hmm. you can essentially do a, a little bit of an add-on to what Austin did. You can start to see if they can do a flexed arm hang. All right. They can do that for a couple of like two or three seconds. Like they can actually get their chin over the bar and hang there without having to jump up and do it. That's good. Then after there, you progress in the negatives. Mm -hmm. You'd have them do a couple, a couple of negatives. Once they're doing sets of three or four negatives under control, and you start adding partials in, so they go halfway down and come mm -hmm. halfway up. Then they go three quarter, you know, three quarters of the way down and mm -hmm. all the way up. And then eventually they'll get to a dead hang and all the way up, yep. or you know, actually starting from the top all the way up. Yep. Once they can, once they can do nice. one with a little bounce at the bottom. Like they'll probably in the next session or two be able to do it better. Nice. So that's that's just like a, another ordering for somebody that's otherwise healthy just isn't that strong yep. yet, uh, and it's very directed, similar work to what people are doing. So the general answer is you use the negative, right. use the eccentric capacity that the person has already got. Increase the range of motion of that and build mm. up from that. The only thing, so so any anything that that uses that is probably going to work pretty well. Okay. What never works is kipping pull-ups. Yep. <laughs> you know what a kipping pull-up is. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Put it out of your mind. The the right. la the last question I actually had is personal. I quite excited coming from overseas, coming to Texas. I want to know, I've been asking around, where the best barbecue is in town. In this town? Yes. Oh, I think it's probably at the Branding Iron. Okay. Down on, uh, down at, on Scott and, uh, and uh, Kill, I guess it is, Branding Iron. Uh, this part of the state's not the best barbecue. You have to go down by Austin to get the best barbecue. Best barbecue in Texas is in Lockhart, down south of Austin. Mm -hmm. Worth a trip. Are you going to be in Austin? No. Will you be in Dallas? Uh, yes, I will, actually. Probably good barbecue in Dallas. So. <laughs> I don't know. You know, there's a place, there's a small chain down there called Soul Man's Barbecue. That's yeah. pretty good. Anybody had Soul Man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where is that? I don't know. Somewhere downtown. The pecan shed? Part eight in, uh, 
Hard eight in uh, Stephenville is real good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hard eight in Stephenville down on 281. That's a good place to go. Mm. That place is 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 real good. Yeah. Hello. Jess. Oh, yeah. Um, for older adults over 70 who are interested in strength training, but they're on a fixed income and a terrified of the internet, how would you, do you have any suggestions how, like, you could suggest or they could start? Just man up. Yeah? They're going to have to man up. They can't be afraid of information because the internet is just information. Okay. It doesn't kill anybody. 70-year-old people are pain in the ass a lot of times mm -hmm. and not all of them are but a lot of them like star before star died he would never he'd never even seen the internet mm -hmm. wasn't interested in uh, participating sometimes these people just aren't interested in learning anything else they know they're gonna have to learn some shit they don't want to learn anything it's too much trouble so they sit there without a telephone mm -hmm. right not having the internet is like not having a telephone mm -hmm. in 1970, right? right? Uh, you, you can't make people interested who are not interested. Okay. You need to outgrow the idea that you can make people interested in the things they need to be interested in because not everybody makes it, mm -hmm. right? And I wish that weren't true, but it is. We've all got relatives, older relatives, that are a pain in the ass, don't we? And we can't do anything about that. All you'll do is piss them off mm -hmm. if you try. The people you help have to be the ones that are receptive to being helped. Because there are lots and lots of them, and it doesn't make any sense to waste your time on people who would rather be left alone. Whether it's good for them or not, it's not your place. To, I mean, it's like it's not my place to walk into somebody else's gym and show one of their members how to squat. Yeah, he needs to know, but it's not my place to do it. It's not your place to aggravate older people who want to just die. <laughs> Let them die. <coughs> just the, the famous words from Captain Kirk in uh, Star Trek, the sixth movie, let them die. <laughs> of course, he was talking about the Klingons, and we're talking about your, your uncle. And I know it, you know, it's hard, but at some point you just got to understand that they're not, if he's not interested in learning anything, yeah. and well, the internet's where you learn it. It's then. more clients, so I work in the community with older adults, and a lot of them, they're waiting. And they're working they at a, a free fall. facility that the, that the city owns? Pardon? And they, they're, they're in a free facility no. that the so city these, owns? this is in communi community health. Right. So they're still at home, and we're basically hovering, waiting for them to have a fall and go into a home. And then a lot of them, they want to remain independent, and they are aware of strength training but they don't you know what I mean like yeah so well I you can't build them a gym yeah. you know now you could if you are so inclined you could give them a ride yeah. and show them what to do but if, if that's just not feasible yeah then it's not feasible yeah we can't make it feasible mm -hmm. You know, there are a lot of people, and I've said this a couple of times in one of the recent, one of the recent podcasts. In fact, I, in fact, I think I was talking to Sagan about this when uh, Rebecca and I were talking about this. I pointed out we are narrow casting here. What we're doing here, we're narrow casting. All right. We're, we're, we have a method here that's logical that makes rational sense, that works every single time it is used, mm -hmm. without exception. It works every single time it's used, right? We're the only exercise method in existence that works every single time it's used because it's, it's just arithmetic and physics, <clears throat> right? We didn't invent anything new. This works every time it's done, right? But that kind of a thing only appeals to a certain, per a certain percentage of the population. Not everybody's intelligent enough to understand what we're doing. Mm 
mm -hmm. or to appreciate what can be accomplished here. Mm -hmm. It takes a base level of intelligence to be able to, to process this. Mm -hmm. Not everybody's going to be interested in it. Not everybody's interested in something they don't read in, in uh, Time Magazine or People Magazine. Not everybody, you know, people down around the 100, 105 percentile IQ are just not going to be interested in this. Mm -hmm. And I'm real sorry, but we can't change that. We can't make people smarter. We can't make people interested in what is going to be good for them. Mm -hmm. We but can't the, make people but, interested but in ask, doing stuff hard. But I'm asking about the ones who are, right? Well, the ones who are, you've got to get them to a barbell. Yeah. Where's the I'm, barbell? I'm their nurse, though. That's like beyond right. my... So skill. what I'm saying is that if you're not willing yeah. to take them to a barbell... They have to figure it out themselves. They have to figure it out for themselves. Okay. Or you need to advocate for them or the system to help them, right? Because it's a systemic problem yeah. that healthcare doesn't value strength. Yeah. has it with the potential to improve quality of life and independence in yeah. older age, right? Health care would probably, uh, there are huge swaths of the healthcare industry that would rather they did not get up. Yeah, exactly. Yes, Their exactly. Economics are predicated on a certain amount of helplessness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's ugly, but that's just the way shit is. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, well, what are we going to do? Close all the nursing homes? You mm -hmm. think there'll be some opposition to that? Mm -hmm. You know, so, uh, you know, we're, we're, once again, we are narrow casting and you have to understand that we're not going to reach everybody, yeah. at least not in the next 10 years. So we're if not there's a reach will, everybody. there's a way, they'll figure it out. If there's a will and if there's not a will, yes. you can't make their oh, be yeah, a will. Oh yeah, I don't want to do that. Right. It's not your job, not your responsibility. Yeah. You know, all you can do is tell people what's true, tell people what's logical, what's right. And if they act on it, fabulous. We'll bend over backwards to help them. Mm -hmm. But if they're not interested, then we have other shit to do. Mm -hmm. That's why I try to coach as many other doctors as I can. Anyone who has a sliver of interest, I bring them over and I coach them for free, oftentimes. And I don't do it with anybody else because I'm like, I want more. I want to incentivize them to come and learn to not be afraid of strength and then try to tell their patients about it and stuff like that. So and that approach good. makes a big impact. Yeah. yeah. Right? That's a good idea. But if you've got somebody in the rest home and you've told them what they need to know, you've told their caretaker what the caretaker needs to know, mm -hmm. and the caretaker's not interested, caretaker's just waiting on them to die, mm -hmm. I, I hate that. I've had to do that recently myself. And you can't get them to listen to you. You can't get them to listen to you. And you better not grieve about it. You better just mm -hmm. go on to the next one. Mm -hmm. Do as much good as you can. Okay.